Welcome back, and for those of you who don't know, my name is Rob McFarlane, and I analyze your favorite film and TV series to see how the filmmakers do it. So we're gonna head into the next film essay, so grab a cup of your favorite coffee, and we're gonna take a look at three ways that confining your characters makes us scared. films aren't just a way for filmmakers to keep the budget down. We're focused solely in one space, which makes us really, really get to know the characters. This forces filmmakers and writers to find ever more ingenious ways of using spaces that we see and will see over and over and over again in the film. But why is confining your characters in a space a really great way of scaring the audience? Pause off, it's still functional. <laughs> Oh my god, old Sydney didn't miss a trick, did he? By forcing your character, or characters, into a confined space, we trigger a very deep human instinct to look for an escape route. However, when you've given your main character or characters a brilliant and convincing, and that's a really key area, convincing reason that they must stay within this space, at least for the period of the film, we really trigger a fear of what might be lurking in the shadows that we can no longer escape. Another key human instinct that this triggers within the audience is the idea of fight or flight. Now, let's be honest, the majority of us would choose flight over fight. I think we can all agree that there's most likely a higher chance of survival by pegging it in the opposite direction to the big bad monster in the shadow. This is triggered even more effectively when the filmmakers show that our characters are less physically able. And this is really, really nicely shown in Woman in the Window, where we see that she has not only an alcohol problem, but she's also on prescription drugs, which make her hallucinate and fall asleep, making her an easy target. As you're still here, you may as well just hit subscribe and the like button so, you know, you make sure you don't miss any more of my episodes. May as well. Another fantastic example is in Panic Room, when we see a woman who is claustrophobic with her daughter who has type 1 diabetes are accosted in their home by three male thieves. They have no hope of possibly fighting against them in a one-on-one -on -one straight heads up match. So instead they have to use their panic room. And a third a classic example would be the original Alien movie, where we see Ripley, who's a communications officer, must survive a deadly alien monster running rampant around their ship, killing off all her other crewmates. Move! Get out of there! In this case, I would probably suggest that it wouldn't have mattered if the lead character was male or female, mainly because the alien is just so incredibly dominant as a predator that, well, I mean, it doesn't seem to have any problem with anyone, so... I can't lie to you about your chances, but... You have my sympathies. Quite often, when our characters are put in corners or in situations where they have to hide, they end up in situations where they literally are right up against it, where there is nowhere else to run. Such as in the case of Woman in the Window, when she literally has nowhere else to run except for outside, directly facing her agoraphobia. And for those of you who don't know what that means, is essentially the fear of open spaces. So the outside is pretty much exactly where she doesn't want to be. But to save her own life, she has to confront her fear and surpass it. Otherwise, well, I mean, she's had it. <laughs> Thank you. 
And finally, the third way that I believe confined space films do so well at scaring people is they make the details matter. Whenever we start a movie, it's quite important that the filmmakers show us the character, their deep-seated problem or issue that they're going to have to confront to be able to get their desire by the end of the film, and the important elements of each space. So when something changes within that world, we get an idea of why that is important. And because confined space films only have a set number of objects and items that we're going to really be able to remember, the filmmakers can really take a good amount of time to make sure that we understand just how important each element is. Goodbye, Punch. I'm sorry I'm so allergic to you. Why didn't you say something? For instance, in Woman in the Window, when we see that the cat has been put downstairs, it's our first clue that maybe the boy across the road who happens to be allergic to cats has been entering the house and has put the cat downstairs on purpose so he doesn't have an allergic reaction to that cat. Hey, what are you doing down here? Poor guy, you've been down here all night. How did you get down here? In Woman in the Window, in the third shot of the film, we get a shot up the spiral staircase, looking directly at this beautiful skylight that's looking a little worse for wear. Then a little later in the film, a sub-character tells her that that window is actually quite dangerous. Now, having done this for a little while, kind of the old filmmaking thing, um, that did scream to me, someone's gonna fall through that window. Just saying. <laughs> Time for coffee. Thank you so much for making it this far in the episode. It would be absolutely awesome if you could share this episode or any of the others that you've really enjoyed, as I'm really trying to grow this channel so I can make even better episodes for you guys. In Panic Room, we see a very specific control terminal that tells us everything that we need to know about the security in the house. Bypass non-ready zone. Shut. Enter. Oops. This is made even more important by the fact that this woman and her daughter have only just moved in, so there are very few other items around the house to distract us with their importance. This really keeps us focused on only the story elements, only the things which we really need to know about. And actually, this is a perfect example of having only a few items on the screen at any time to make sure that we're focusing on what is actually important to the story. In a way, this is actually kind of moving back to a more pure form of cinema as well, because we're not overcomplicating the image. So on this control panel, when we see an alarm is tripped, we immediately understand the relevance of it because nothing else has been pointed at. Everything else is completely stripped away and bare, and we understand that this is an incredibly important element on the screen, even though we actually haven't spent that much time in this house. David Fincher has made sure to take time to let us know about the relevance of that alarm panel. Don't forget to chuck a comment down below to let me know what other TV series and movies you'd like to see analysed in the coming weeks.